It is said that death is not a full stop, but a semicolon in the story of our lives. Psychologists say the way we human beings allow our terminally ill and aged to die is a reflection of both ourselves and our own human values. So what do we choose? Indignity or dignity for the dying? The sort of treatment they give her in here, I wouldn't be able to give her at home. Cancer is gradually claiming Ivy's life. Doctors have given her about a month to live. Ivy's granddaughter, Lisa, visits her every day and other family members come often. It isn't the same as being at home, but Lisa admits the family couldn't cope. She's had to get, give a lot of trouble at night and so on. And we had to be getting up and taking care of her and so on. It was going to be a hassle. At best, cancer is not easy to die from. The pain is sometimes terrible. It is a living water loss pieces policy not to prolong life, but to relieve pain and to make the passage as smooth as possible. We are here, we have strong medicine to control your pain, and we'll increase it as it goes along, and we won't let you suffer. This attitude is sometimes resisted by family of the terminally ill and other medical practitioners, but not often. We've had many stories of, of people who have had a drip on one hand, a tube in the nose, um, a mask with oxygen on, and, and, and the person just says, look, just leave me and let me die with dignity. Don't prolong my, my life. Nothing is regimented, and nurses are in tune with their patients. Well, they tell you about their life before they were ill, and their families, and what, how, you know, how they, it all came about, and what they would have liked to do. There's even time for a laugh. <laughs> They become friends. Sometimes they're frightened, and they just need somebody to be there to hold their hands and to give them that sort of support. And that's where we all come in. Many come in angry, oh, but spirituality is encouraged. Relate really to God, talk to God. Everybody who you've quarreled with and had a fight with, reconcile yourself, get things all in order get ready to meet God. These nurses witness deaths often and say it doesn't have to be sad and can be a personal wonderful experience for the dying and those who look on caring. Patients might see their past relatives and, and their, their, their things perhaps flashes of the nice times that they've had or with people they've met and it's been so nice and you would see a lady just started smiling one day she said oh dear Oh, this old lady, doesn't she look lovely? And she said, oh, I'm happy now. The Lost Peace generally admits only short-term, terminally ill cancer patients, but has also taken in aged, ill, and poor vagrants and the senile off the streets. Patients' families only pay what they can afford. How is your life inside here? How, how are things since you come in? Well, you enjoy it here? Well, yeah. yeah. You've been witnessing one of the last days of the few lucky ones. But the unlucky ones are in the majority and are dying, scared, lonely and forgotten somewhere. There's a huge need for more hospices, for AIDS patients, for the aged and for those dying with indignity on the streets. People in our country are left to die on the streets. As a, as a nation, I don't believe that we take care properly of our old people. We abandon them after they have given the best of their years to us and we we abandon them when they are weak and infirm, and we leave them to die on the street. I don't think you really will understand, but it's, it's dying. It's, 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 a very, it's just like being born, really. Now, for the past few days, she's talking about her birthday, because just now it's her birthday. Oh, so she wants her birthday party. Hospice is a charitable, non-governmental organization of the Living Water community, and has taken more than 600 patients in the last nine years. Ira Mathur, TV6 News, with a special report, Dying with Dignity.